Welcome back everyone. I'm Roxanne Newman, conference producer for Analytical Cannabis, and I'm here to introduce the next talk in today's event. I'm really pleased to have Ginny Curry joining us today as your presenter. Ginny is the laboratory director at Modern Canna Labs in Lakeland, Florida. Potency and nutrients. Is there a distinct correlation? Ginny's background in both environmental chemistry and biomedical genetics give her an advantage when studying cannabis from a medicinal and botanical standpoint. Hello everyone. This presentation will be focused on the study that our laboratory has and is still currently conducting um, on nutrients in cannabis buds and whether there's a distinct correlation that can be established between those concentrations and the concentrations of cannabinoids. Nutrients are essential. Simply put, for an organism to develop and to grow, there must be nutrients present. When thinking about nutrients in plant growth, it's best to look at nutrients as the food that the plant is consuming. One of the most interesting things about nutrients is that every plant has a unique nutrient profile and an ideal range that the nutrients should fall into. There are 16 essential elements that a plant requires in order to grow. Those elements include carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and then 13 additional elements which must be supplied to the plant. The 13 elements that must be supplied include nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, iron, zinc, manganese, copper, boron, molybdenum, and chlorine. All nutrients that must be supplied to the plant can be broken down into three main categories, macronutrients, secondary nutrients, and micronutrients. When looking at the nutrients in cannabis, horticulturists have identified an ideal amount of those elements in soil for the plant to experience the best growth possible. Cultivators have done an amazing job of determining the signs and symptoms of nutrient deficiency and abundance in cannabis leaves. Not much research has been conducted regarding the nutrient content in buds and how that concentration relates to the cannabinoid concentration. So the question is, is there a distinct correlation between potency and nutrients? And in particular, can any correlations be established regarding the concentrations of both cannabinoids and nutrients in the flower that is harvested? Ideally, if correlations and trends can be established, cultivators would be able to properly nourish their chemovars in order to create the best yield. They would be able to test the product for nutrients throughout the plant's life cycle and could in turn determine what elements needed to be added or removed from the nutrition that the plant is receiving. For this study, we first needed to identify the macro and micronutrients that were present in cannabis buds and establish a methodology for analyzing the samples. Next, we needed to determine the concentration of the nutrients in the cannabinoids we were monitoring and look at the differences across many known chemovars. Once the concentrations were calculated, the individual elements were compared to each other and to the cannabinoids and to other strains. Finally, in order to see the big picture across these nutrients, cannabinoid concentrations needed to be tracked over time and across each of the individual chemovars. Once all of these items were done, trends and correlations were examined and established. After running some initial tests on the cannabis buds, we narrowed the focus of the study to look at nine of the nutrients that were mentioned previously. Of those nine, we broke them into two categories, macronutrients, which also included some of the secondary nutrients, and the micronutrients. As you can see, the macronutrients included are calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur, while the micronutrients included boron, iron, manganese, and zinc. It's also important to note that we tracked more analytes than just THC and CBD. We also included total CBN and total CBG in order to determine if these analytes provided any trends or correlations. In order to perform the necessary testing, we needed to determine the best way to monitor the nutrients and cannabinoids that we were focusing on. For the nutrient analysis, we opted to use an ion-coupled plasma with optical emission spectroscopy. To perform the potency analysis, we used high-performance liquid chromatography with UV detectors. The nutrient analysis was conducted using modified EPA methodology for soil, 
samples and our potency analysis utilized methods that we have validated both internally and externally. Our laboratory has based most of our methodology on standard EPA methods. At this moment, the study consists of 540 unique samples. These samples were collected over the course of three months and the potency and nutrient analyses were performed in tandem. Those 540 samples can be broken down into 31 different chemovars. The chemovars include indica, sativa, and hybrid strains, as well as chemovars that are CBD dominant. In order to eliminate an additional variable, all results were dry weight corrected to a standard 12% moisture. For the nutrients, the individual nutrients were calculated. However, the study also focused on the total macro, the total micro, and the total nutrient concentrations that were present. This scatter plot is graphing the macronutrient concentration in percentage compared to the total THC percentage across all of the samples included in the study. From this, we were able to establish that the macronutrients seen at the highest concentration in cannabis was potassium, while sulfur was the macronutrient which had the lowest overall concentration. The average concentration of sulfur was 0.3%, while potassium had an average concentration of about 2.5%. Similar to the last slide, a scatter plot graphing the micronutrient concentration in percentage compared to the total THC percentage across all of the samples included in the study was also charted. This graph revealed that though manganese was found at a lower average concentration than iron, the standard deviation across the spread was larger than the standard deviation seen in iron. This indicated that when comparing the concentrations of these two elements across different chemovars, there may be a greater variation in those results than the other micronutrients. Boron is the least concentrated micronutrient and was seen in a less of a spread when compared to the other nutrients. There are several trends and correlations that we were able to establish during this study. However, with the limited amount of time we have today, I will only be able to share some of this information with you. When comparing the total nutrients to the total THC percentage across all THC dominant chemovars, it was determined that a negative correlation may exist between the total nutrients and the total THC. Initial results indicate that there may also be an ideal range to the total nutrients to yield potencies that are in the 20% range. One of the most interesting and noteworthy results was the relationship that was seen between total calcium concentration and the THC concentration in the THC dominant chemovars. Uh, it is clearly apparent from this that there is some indications that would lead to a conclusion that less calcium in the bud yields a higher THC percentage. These two graphs are comparing the individual chemovars to the total macro and total micronutrient concentrations as they relate to THC. All indications point to a similar consensus that the total nutrient concentration in the buds have a negative relationship on the total THC. However, I would like to mention that the cluster that is present in the macronutrient graph um, kind of raises some additional questions. Um, and this has led to the need of additional testing prior to determining if the spread on the macronutrients is more or less important than the spread of the micronutrients. This graph represents one of the chemovars that is part of the study. For this particular chemovar, there are 53 data points, which can be found along the x-axis. There is a primary axis um, and a secondary axis, which include the macronutrient concentration on the primary axis and the total THC concentration on the secondary axis. The samples have been sorted by THC concentrations going from the lowest concentration to the highest concentration. As you can see, the chemovar did not have a significant change in potassium or phosphorus concentrations, which are in red and purple, respectively. There is, however, a significant variation in the magnesium and sulfur and calcium concentration. The final pieces of data that I would like to share with you today are the indica strain trends that were seen. The graph included here plot all the data points for known indica strains that were a part of the study. The top graph contradicts the previous graphs which have shown that the relationship between nutrients and potency is negative. 
However, it does support the cluster data that was seen previously for the macronutrients. This may be what is counteracting the negative relationship that is seen between calcium and THC, thus resulting in those cluster points seen on the previous graph. Boron, however, which is a micronutrient, resulted in a well-defined negative correlation similar to results that were seen in most of the micronutrients. With this study, there have been a variety of challenges that need to be addressed prior to being able to publish the data which we have obtained. And some of those challenges include cultivators, growing conditions, and sample aliquots. The samples used in this study were collected from multiple licensed medical marijuana treatment centers, or MMTCs, across the state of Florida. One of the biggest differences that arise with Florida cultivators are the growing conditions in which the product is produced. The Florida market consists of both greenhouse and hydroponic grow facilities, which drastically affect the growing conditions that the plants experience. The final challenge has been the obstacle of standardizing the sample aliquots. The trim style and the flower type, whether that be whole buds or little buds or ground flower, um, they, they all have an additional variable that's hard to correct for. And some of the samples in this may have more leaf material than others, which could also lead to potential data skewing. Um, and so that has to be monitored as well. Trends for individual nutrients are clearly present, both negative and positive. However, at this time, the full extent of those trends is not yet understood. There is a negative correlation that can be seen between calcium content and THC concentration in cannabis buds. The total nutrient concentration in buds compared to the total THC is showing a similar trend to the one I mentioned above, comparing the calcium and the THC. The ideal ranges for the nutrients in buds cannot be determined without more research. With that being said, we do plan to continue this research prior to publishing the full extent of the results um, that we've obtained up to this point. Um, part of the continued research will include additional partnerships with cultivators, the addition of some more controlled variables, monitoring of growth and uh, monitoring the growth of cannabis in those improved growing conditions that we have discussed and we've seen, whether that's adding a nutrient or removing a nutrient, um, also adding more chemovars and including some leaf analysis as well. The following are the references that were used for this study, and I would like to give a special thanks to the individuals at Analytical Cannabis for this opportunity and to my team at Modern Canna for all of their help with this study. Thank you for your time.